hi guys welcome to this channel in this video we are going to be talking about structural loads on columns in buildings columns are referred to as compressive member their main purpose as a structural element is to transfer load from beams and slab to the footing most especially columns start from the footing and extend into the roofing part of a building but in some situations you can have columns that does not extend to the footing but hangs around so this type of column are referred to as floating column or stopped columns these columns are necessary when the architectural design or when the layout of the building does not allow for the columns to start from the footing and then there is need for you to have the column at the upper part of the building columns are generally vertical in nature but sometimes they can be slanted depending on the aesthetic need and also the structural needs so we have two major forms of load on columns we have the concentrated load and we also have the lateral loads the concentrated load is as a result of the self weight of the column itself the supporting structural elements such as beam slab and other components in which the column is supporting but in some other situations, you, you can have wind load acting on columns. This involves when the column is unbraced. So in this kind of situation, you can have lateral loads that is acting on the column either at the mid along the column length or at the end of the column. So this load can form can either be in form of wind load or earthquake load. How can this type of load be formed from columns? We have a uh, loads on column can be derived from different forms especially in a building the first is the self weight of the column itself the self weight of the column is calculated from the density of construction materials if your column is made from steel or concrete so you cap the density of the material multiplied by the area of volume we give you the total self weight of on the columns and this is usually in form of a compressive force as a concentrated load on the column member. Okay. Then we also have loads due to slab or beam. So these are loads that are transferred from the buildings in form of slab load and beam load. They are being transferred by the column to the foundation. Then we also have loads due to other columns for example when a column when a grand column is supporting another column in the upper floor the load of the upper floor columns is going to be transferred directly to the column in the lower floor so and the diagrammatical representation of that can actually be shown using the loading pattern of this building for example the the loading from this beam will be transferred to both this column and this column at the same time and this column will, together with its self weight we transfer the load to the lower column the lower column will transfer the load to the one below it the one below it will transfer the load down or to where we get to the foundation so this is how the loading pattern of columns goes but in case of a floating column or a stored column that does not extend to the foundation in this kind of situations the the load will be distributed from the floating column into the beam and in this case it's going to be acting as a concentrated load you can watch my video on structural load on beam you are going to get more insight on this you can find the video in the description of this video or you can check the top right corner are the various type of load forms of load that we can have on columns self weights are calculated to be concentrated on the column then the same thing, the load due to slab and beam can also be formed as a concentrated load as well as the load due to other column in which the column is supporting. So before we continue on this video, if this is your first time on this channel and you love what I'm showing you, you can subscribe to the channel, like the video and even share it with your colleague. I'm sure they are going to learn from it. So lastly let's now talk about the loading effects in which this load imposes on columns we have different loading effects but in for columns we have three major major ones the first of them is the compressive axial load 
load due to self weight load due to other columns and also in some cases load due to beams then we also have shear force shear force is another loading effect on columns and we have bending moment this, this is usually caused due to the supporting beams in which the column is supporting in the building so they transfer both exer forces as well as bending moment to the column so these are the different kind of structural loads that you can find on columns if you want to learn more about structural load on slab and beam you can subscribe to this channel and check my video on them thank you see you in the next one